packets and also receive a packet when you walk in with their outlines. Um, they are, I know a lot of you have questions. We, we have uh, three by five note cards that each of you have. You're going to be writing your questions out on there. Last time during the budget event, we passed a mic, mic around and things got a little long, a little redundant, so we're going to try something new. Hopefully that, that works out well. And so this is our panel. The first um, panelist is Kathy Rodriguez out of, our car, out of our Harvard Road office in Modesto. Jeff Green out of our Oakdale office. Bethany Mendoza out of the Orangeburg office. Carol Ford out of the Stockton office. And Rosa Gonzalez out of the Stockton office. So with that, um, Paul and I will be around with collecting those three by five cards. And with that, Kathy, why don't you get started? Okay, there we go. I'm Kathy Rodriguez from Carpenter Road, and I just want to take a few moments to kind of go over preparing your client for a short sale. Um, when I'm taking a short sale, my first meeting initially with the client is usually pretty much to just counsel the client about what their options are and to make sure a short sale is really what's the best for the client. In my experiences, I would say six out of ten times, we don't usually end up taking the listing um, because the short sale isn't what's best for the client. Um, at the time that we meet. It may end up turning into a short sale later, but there's other options and avenues that they haven't tried yet. Um, most of these mortgagers I have found haven't went through the modification process, and it's a very important process in today's lending world that the client does at least exercise their right to do a loan modification. Um, if you take a short sale listing without the client at first attempting to do a loan modification, many times it's been my experience that the lender loss mitigator you get assigned will end up talking to your client and in the process of a short sell packet or uh, negotiation, they end up talking the client into at least applying for a modification and the client goes through with that and applies, they immediately will stop your short sell. So all the work that you've done on the short sell immediately will be lost and they go into the modification. The modification may end up being unsuccessful and you may end up with that short sell back. So, I have added that as the number one thing that I counsel my clients to do is to pick up the phone and make sure that they talk to their lender about doing a loan modification. Even if the loan modification has failed, my next question is, do you know why it failed? And I had this conversation last night, well they said I didn't make enough. Um, and counseling the client, single young man, house payment of $1,500 a month, including taxes and insurance, I said what if you got a roommate? four or five hundred dollars a month, could that be enough income to make your modification work out for you? He said, maybe. I said, my, my advice to him was to refile for his modification because he did want to keep his home. So I really stress to the clients to try to, if they, if if they want to keep their home, that they do get up, pick up the phone, stay involved with their lender, and really try to do a loan modification. If that fails, then I move on with the client about advising them things that will happen during the short sale process and the things that I would want to make sure that we didn't have any problems as we're um, trying to do the short sale modification. Before I will actually put the listing on the market, these are the things that I ask to be turned in. I ask for an authorization to release information. We do the listing agreement with the short sale agenda, a financial statement, a hardship letter, um, any financial verification documents that the, that the bank would probably require, such as bank statements, two paycheck stubs, two years tax returns. Um, once an offer is received, we'll have to participate in getting a HUD-1 from the title company and it, uh, to complete the short sale package before it's turned in. Um, I do not proceed with putting the listing on the MLS until these documents are in, uh, because the last thing you want is to go ahead and market the property, get an offer, and then not have your documents from your seller to be able to submit your packet. And that has happened to me in the past and we've had to actually pull the listing back off the market. So I'm pretty stringent on what I want my sellers to do. Um, your seller engagement in the short sell process, to me, is key to whether or not you're going to be successful. Um, your seller is really who you're doing this for and if the seller stays involved with you by making the phone calls also to the bank with you, I feel I have a better success rate with the short sell. Um, and more importantly, you want to make sure that your seller, seller stays engaged so they don't disappear on you. I've also had that happen in a short sale. They move out, they're gone, their number got changed, and their cell phone's disconnected. You're processing a short sale, and all of a sudden you have nobody. So those are the key things for me as far as doing a short sale that I think are really important. I did compile um, 
terms that are in the paperwork that I'm not going to go over here because they want to keep it short, that people get confused about forbearance versus foreclosure. Those are all in your packet. Um, those are the common questions that I get. Um, a lot of times people don't understand what a forbearance is and what their options are. Sale. 